What's up guys, how's it going? It is Matt here. So we're gonna talk about a little topic today that I wanted to get into. So it's grunt life versus pogue life. And people are like, what? Well, for all the people who were in the military, basically there's two different types of people in the military, two types of MOSs. There's grunt MOSs and there's pogues, okay? Grunts are like me, we're the guys that infantry guys, we're overseas, we're actually in fights and we're training nonstop and we're constantly doing stuff. Pogues are pretty much in an office or bullshit in the entire tour, doing absolutely nothing except bullshit details and stuff like that. Now, there's a big difference between grunts and the pogues, not just on the standpoint of the MOS, on their mindset and on the way how they handle things, the way how they do things. As a grunt, we don't get promoted very often. We just don't. We don't get promoted very often at all. And there's a good reason behind that, because we're kind of assholes. We, we kind of are. So. See, when you start getting into training and firefights and stuff like that, then you no longer become a, uh, you know, garrison marine, we'll say that. You no longer become a garrison marine. You don't care about the garrison stuff that's going on. That's like having your camis properly pressed and your cover properly right and all your you know, boots perfect order. You don't give a crap about that because you're more worried about your next operation and what's going to happen on your next operation. You're more worried about your training and next operation and your, maybe you're a little bit of downtime before you're gonna get out there and get in harm's way again. Whereas a pogue, when they get deployed in a combat zone, there's two different things that they do. They usually get a job where there's some, basically they have an office job. They have an office job that's overseas and it's all garrison and cleaning and windexing and all that other stuff. I had a couple buddies that were uh, IPAC guys. IPAC was the, uh, was, I think it's IPAC is what they called it. It was like the uh, administration guys. So. Basically, that is pretty much what they do their entire appointment, and they're miserable. They're really good at making coffee. They make some awesome coffee because they do it on a daily basis, and they get promoted like crazy because all they have time for is to work in their office and then get, try to get promoted. That's all they're trying to do. They're always trying to get promoted nonstop all the time. They're always doing these little, uh, what do they call them? Um, little uh, tests that you have to take and you have to uh, like test this like extended uh, education. I don't remember the exact name of it. You have to take those in order to get promotion points to get out there and you have to have the uh, perfect PT scores and all the other stuff. So they're constantly taking these tests to try to get their way up to the top. Whereas grunt guys, you know, there's some that will go out and try to do that. But grunt guys, we're too busy training. We're doing too busy training or too busy fighting to really give a crap about that stuff. You know, my unit was notorious, 1st Battalion, 7th Marines, who said Charlie, my unit was notorious as our uh, platoon commanders, and our, not platoon commanders, but our uh, squad leaders. When I first got in, my squad leader was a private first class, PFC, E2, okay? That seems kind of weird to most people because like squad leader in E2, you know, if you're in the army, you're like, oh my God, how dare they? Squad leader can only be a E5 or E6. But the way how the Marine Corps works, it's a little bit differently. You see, we had this belief that we really, we had traditions. We like to follow our traditions. You see, our traditions were pretty uh, standard for grunts. Uh, we'll just say that, pretty standard for grunts in my unit. Um, we like to base thing off, things off of, you know, our, our absolute hero of our 1st Battalion, 7th Marines from World War II, uh, Chesty Puller. Um, one, of the one of the famous things that he said was, you aren't a real Marine unless you've been demoted twice. On that note, another thing that we're really, really good at as grunts is, say if you got like a butter bar, a guy that just came out of the academy and he, he takes command of the platoon, a platoon commander, and luckily we didn't have one. Well, we didn't have to deal with too many, we'll just say that. And they come and they try to critique your tactics and all that other stuff, and they're idiots and they don't know what the hell they're talking about. You see, butter bars, if you give them a compass, they'll go into a Walmart and they'll get lost. Just saying. So, but anyway, so we'll, they'll, they'll be going there and trying to critique our tactics and tell us what we did wrong and how they would have done it better and stuff like that. And then our staff and CEOs pretty much get up in their face and they say, with all due respect, sure, shut the on that, on that note, when we were dealing with other Pogue units, like say Pogue units, and you have a master sergeant like walking around saying that, you know, being a jackass to us because, you know, we are shaving our heads on the outside because we are on the downed helicopter team so we couldn't leave the airstrip. Uh, unless you're on an operation or patrol, you couldn't leave the airstrip so you're sitting out there, you know, getting your hair, your hair trimmed outside of your freaking uh, hooch and he comes over and he's bitching and complaining because what you're doing is unsanitary you, know, you shouldn't be doing that outside in, in, in a war zone so we'll take it inside and then he'll come back and check us on the inside and say oh you're unsanitary because you're doing that then it's just like uh it kind of gets a little um yeah let's just say heated between the grunts and the pogues so that's when our staff ncos um go up politely and say the 
ever so famous, with all the respect, sir, shut the up. That's kind of our tradition. Marine Corps Rifleman, 1st Battalion, 7th Marines, which is one of the most decorated units in the Marine Corps, we had the most battle streamers, unless it's been changed since that time, but at the current time, we had the most battle streamers on our guidelines, because we've been in every single war, major war, and conflict in, uh, the entire United, in the United States of America. General Mad Dog Mattis himself is called 1st Battalion, 7th Marines, the tip of the spear. Those are the guys that go out there and get the shit done with every operation. It's like Guadalcanal, 1st Battalion, 7th Marines just going up the way. The Chosen Reservoir, 1st Battalion, 7th Marines. So, we've always been kind of the tip of spear. We crossed the border of Iraq, right? We did. Um, Desert Storm, we were the first ones to cross. <laughs> Desert Storm, 1st Battalion, 7th Marines. You know, one of our gunnery sergeants was a freaking grunt. You know, it was just a little bitty grunt. And you know, went when it, during Desert Storm, he was our, our company gunnery sergeant. So, Pretty much when you're a grunt, when you're an infantryman, you don't have time for the BS and all the other stuff. And if you look at our little wall lockers, all you'll see are camis, 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 camis. Oh, I see it. He, he dropped his tray. You see tons of camis and maybe a one or two uniforms that's in a bag. If you look at a pogue lockers, it's cami, 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 uniform, 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 uniform. That's pretty much what they are. They always have the, the proper amount of camis. They always have the right, the, the exact amount of the green camis that they need and the exact amount of the desert camis we need. As grunts, we're fighting to find that stuff because we destroy our shit all the time because of the training and the bullshit and all the other stuff that we're doing on a daily basis. Our stuff get destroyed. When the Pogues had brand new spanking boots, you know, brand, brand new spanking Marine Corps boots, we had to settle for the old school freaking desert boots because our boots, the soles, were actually melting off of them on patrols. So there's a big difference between a grunt mentality and a Pogue mentality. Now, sometimes we get into some heated debates because when Marine, when when grunts get out, we just we're just kind of angry. <laughs> when grunts get out, we're just kind of angry and we're tired of BS and stuff like that. When pogues get out, they want to prove that they did something worthy in the Marine Corps. So they're telling stories and doing all this stuff all the time. So they call themselves experts in like different stuff or like whether MOS is, they call themselves experts. And then they'll tell you though, for some reason, they'll say that they know better about marksmanship and all that other stuff because during their time of service, they were also, you know, range safety officers or not range safety officers, uh, PMIs, uh, shooting instructors and stuff like that. When in truth, they have only ever, ever shot on a closed range. That's it. They've only ever shot their firearms or small arms on a closed range. Now, whereas grunts, you don't qualify every year like every other MOS out there. You don't have time to qualify every year. Technically, yeah, you're supposed to, but when you're constantly being deployed and there's not even a year between your deployments and you're constantly training nonstop in between the deployments, you don't have a whole lot of time to actually go out to the range and do the whole couple week qualification process of going out to there, you know, shooting 100, 200, 300, 500. And of course, you just don't have the time to do that because you're constantly training when they're getting ready for their annual qualifications and they finally get to pull their, you know, their M16s out for, you know, the second time that they've ever pulled them out this year. You know, a lot of them actually fumble around with them. They can't figure it out. Yeah, I saw some videos. This is actually army videos. Um, this person couldn't even figure out how to load a freaking magazine in an M16, which is freaking blows my mind. It completely blows my mind. Every single day, at least one point of the day, we had to pull our firearms out and we we're in the backyard training is what we called it. Which means the 20 pounds palms, we we're out in the mountains, we we're out in the backyard is what we like to call it. Training, running patrols, running uh, buddy rushes, team rushes, squad rushes, practicing call for fire, practicing for nine line casualties. Nine line for all the people, it's not apparel. Nine line apparel is a name of clothing. A nine line is actually something that you call in when there's a critical casualty on the field. There's a casualty on the field, you need air vac, a medevac to come in, dust off, you need them to come in and pick them up. You call in a nine line report, that's what that is. So as a grunt, you're constantly practicing this stuff nonstop because when you get deployed to a combat zone, you are not gonna be stuck behind a desk with a Beretta on your hip. Um, you know, most of us didn't even have Berettas, most of us didn't even have pistols, but you're not gonna be stuck behind a desk with a pistol on your hip. What you're gonna be doing is you're going to be patrolling, you're gonna be on helicopters, you're gonna be getting ambush. you're gonna be running ambushes. There's downtime, yeah, there's some downtime, there's a decent amount of downtime, but when you're not doing downtime, you're patrolling, you're holding posts, you're standing posts, you're burning shit, you're doing all this stuff nonstop as a, as a grunt. That's kind of what it is for a deployment for a grunt. Whereas a pogue, they show up in the office, Make sure the camis all pressed. They get treated like garrison. 
Uh, the, the garrison, there's a difference between garrison and field marines. Garrison is where they salute and they all that stuff. They don't technically salute, salute in the combat zone is what they do, but they still bring all the other garrison stuff with them, like perfect uniforms, you know, uniform inspections, all that other stuff. They, they bring all that stuff with them, whereas us, as grunts, you know, we don't do that stuff because we just don't have time to do that stuff. We'd rather be out training and trying to stay alive and practicing real world tactics. So when we go out on a patrol or we have to run an ambush or we're doing out uh, checking the border forts or working directly with the HET teams or the ODA teams or whatever it is, we want to have our shit right. So we're always training for that nonstop. So I just wanted to throw it out there because, you know, I got into a little bit of a conversation, a little heated conversation, and uh, you know, this guy basically called me an asshole, which it's all right. So, you know, grunts were considered assholes a lot. Called me an asshole for not taking him seriously. And that's true. I really don't take people seriously if they've never had experience. Perfect example of what grunt life versus pogue life is. My second tour in Iraq were in uh, Al-Assad Air Base. This is when my, my couple squads, we had two squads, were actually take completely detached from a retired, our battalion regiment, wherever it is and attached over to a MU, which was actually, we were working directly with the Joint Special Operations Command, JSOC, for the people that you know, know, the, know the abbreviations. We would always be on helo ops. We'd always do a couple of helo ops, so usually one helo op to two helo ops a day is what we do, and most of the time it's usually like one helo op a day. But some of the helo ops were a couple hours, others were like six, 12 hour days, because we had to go out, check the border forts, and fuel up, and go out, check another border fort, and take specialized uh, teams out there with us to inspect different areas and stuff like that. Or in the other ones, you have operations working in direct support for j -Spot SOC. So you're flying around overhead, holding security, and if something, some shit happens, something goes, bad goes down, it's our job to touch down the CH-46s, give them support by fire, and take or take on their HVTs, their high-value targets. If they take too many, we're supposed to take them on and bring them back to the FOB. So we would get back from a six-hour operation, like a six-hour operation, all sweaty, our candies are all ripped up. You know, part of my job as a 203 gunner is I carry concertina wire because we'd set up these vehicle checkpoints. So we'd have gloves and concertina wire is that razor wire and I'd always be holding it. It would always be ripping my pants up. Every single pair of camis I had were ripped on the right cargo pocket because I was holding my rifle getting out and then I had to run out, run out of the freaking CH-46 with uh, the concertina wire in my hand. So my gloves were ripped up, my pants ripped up, and my shirt was getting ripped up because it's just sh the shit's so sharp. You gotta set those up for like barriers so when a car goes through, they have to weave through it and it slows them down in the vehicle checkpoints. So all of our camis were shit and all of our boots were like, the soles were melted or so worn from running and traveling and humping and all the other stuff that we had really crappy equipment, our stuff was all beat up, and you could tell the difference just by looking at them between the grunts and the Marines. And sometimes we try to keep ourselves clean shaved, but if you're out for a 12 hour operation, you come back a little fuzzy, you know, it just is what it is, or a 24 hour operation, or 48 hours, you come back a little bit fuzzy. That's kind of what being a grunt is about. So we would get back from a six hour operation just in time to make it for the last few, probably about a half hour to an hour, but for the chow hall, before for the chow hall to be open, there was only a couple hour time frame that it was coming, and our operation ended up, and we'd be going, we'd rush to the chow hall right from our operation. We'd rip off our flak. We well, first we had to unload our firearms before we entered the base, and we had it cleared. Then we'd rip off our flak jacket. We're all sweaty as hell. We're dirty as hell. Our hands are all dirty, and sometimes it was cold out there. And cold is like 50, 40 degrees. That's pretty cold when you know you're used to the higher, warmer temperatures throughout the day. So we'd be going back to the chow hall and sweaty clothes, ripped up clothes, dirt on our face, dirt on our hands, and we'd try to wash our hands and go in there. And we'd have our hands in our pockets because our freaking hands were freezing because we were all sweaty and wet and everything else and we were starving. And what would happen? We'd see some pokes. These were air wingers. The air wings were also out there too. These are guys that are sitting in the offices reading radars, maintaining uh, artillery, or maintaining anti-aircraft equipment, all that stuff. That's what these guys are doing. Sitting outside of the chow hall, arms crossed, pressed camis, beautiful looking camis, and this is the digital camis, you're not even technically supposed to press them. Pressed out, their boots are perfectly bloused and everything's good and their campaign covers or their, uh, their uh, yeah, what is it called, the uh, eight point cover is just tight and perfectly the way how it is and they get the serious look on his face and they were always waiting for us. Now, I'm serious, they were always waiting for us because every time they show up at the chow hall, these guys are usually corporals or sergeants who just got promoted and they pretty much spend their day in the office getting their ass chewed and doing stupid stuff. So they want to prove to the world how important their job is. So what they do is they take that NCO achievement to the next level. 
And what they do is they'll stand outside of the chow hall like this where their pistols were in the shoulder rigs because that was a cool thing, pretty shoulder rigs that were never beaten up or actually never left the wire whatsoever. And they'd see us, they'd wait specifically for us. Hey Maureen, get your damn hands out of your pocket. Maureen, clean yourself up. You're filthy, you're not supposed to be going there. Hey devil dog, get your damn hands out of your pockets. This is a Marine Corps base, this is not from freaking playground. That's kind of what they were doing. And it got to a point where we were getting pissed off because it's like we just got back from a freaking six hour operation. You know, we didn't take fire, luckily we didn't take fire in this operation. We just got back from a six hour freaking operation. We're tired, we're sore, we're sweating and we're hungry and these jackasses are standing there these jackass pogues are standing there bitching and complaining because we have our hands in our pockets or because we're dirty what do you expect us to do touch down the CH-46s go back you know wait for our time in the shower take the cold showers and get to the chow hall when the chow hall closed no you're in a combat zone we're gonna go to the chow hall and we're gonna eat our food that's how it works so what would happen is a lot of these people a lot of these pogues what they do unlike the, the grunts the grunts are just trying to get their job done. They have a job to do and they're trying to get their job done. They are usually tired, they're worn out, and they're busy. You know, there's a lot of downtime. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of downtime. But as grunts, when that downtime comes, a lot of times we're out there either smoking and joking or doing some sort of weightlifting or whatever we can just to try to keep ourselves up. Or doing, you know, with our squads. We're down with our fire teams going over, you know, you know, five gra five paragraph orders like we'd ever use them, that type of thing. That's kind of what we were doing. We are like land nav or nine lines and that type of stuff. That's the type of stuff that we were always doing. So the difference is, is with Pogues, however, on the other hand, they spent all their time trying to get promoted, trying to prove to the world that they're Marines too. And then when they get promoted, it's like this uh, light switch like snaps in their head and all of a sudden they're, I-N-C-O, you nothing. When in truth is this guy is freaking a, a pro at pouring coffee. Uh, this guy's is great at pouring coffee, 100% pouring coffee. Uh, this guy, uh, for example, air defense guy, what does he do this entire tour? Uh, well, he sits by the airstrip and waits for our air to come in a place where there's no military, you know, ant or no military aircraft other than ours. So that's what his job is, the, his defensive system. So he sits there pretty much doing nothing and trying to get promoted and bitching and complaining and having downtime. They get a stand post probably. But that's all they're really doing. Whereas us, every single day, you're doing an operation, you're exhausted on a daily basis. There is a difference between the Pogue mindset and the grunt mindset. So when we get out of the military, a lot of grunts, you know, it, it's kind of funny, I can see it on the channel. It's like, when I can tell where a grunt is by the way how they're talking to me, by the way how I'm dealing with them, the way how we're talking about it. Like I'll talk about a specific topic and they'll 100% agree with me. They'll say, you know, you're right, man. So slow, smooth, and lose fast. No problem. You know, this caliber is better. Yeah, they'll agree with me. Then you have the other people that come in and they start bitching and complaining and trying to throw their, all their military service in, in your face and saying this and their MOS and stuff like that. Then you look up your their MOS, you're like, hey, it's a bogue, you know? And those are the ones that are being the assholes to you. They're just trying to prove that they actually did something, you know, worthy when they're in the Marine Corps. Now, don't get me wrong. Every job in the Marine Corps and the military and stuff like that's important. But... Telling me that you're an expert based on your time and service as a pogue and you're telling me that you're an expert in freaking combat and close quarters and shooting and stuff like that. You know, you may be a range coach, maybe good at the range, maybe good at the marksmanship and fundamentals. But what happens when the rounds start flying back at you? How, what type of person are you then? So I don't really take those people seriously. So, you know, a lot of people may call me an asshole or kind of like, a, you know, they say I'm a jerk and stuff like that. You know, they may be a little bit right. They, they may be absolutely a little bit right. But, you know, I just like to say it like this. I'm not a jerk. I'm an asshole. I'm just a freaking grunt. If you like this video, like, share, subscribe. Tell your friends about me. And remember, it's our responsibility to take care of each other and protect each other. Peace.